welcome to this episode of The Gunman. So this video here is an intro vid on this custom color respray that we're doing. It's a Holden Commodore Ute, uh, factory color is Sting Red. So the way we go about doing this is we're putting our base coat color down. This is a uh, DuPont Centauri 6000 range base coat here. We've got four liters in. These reds don't cover very well, so we decided to get the full four liters. Uh, we've got, we're painting the entire car except for the insides of the door jams or anything like that. So uh, we're going to put our own pearl coat over the top. So we put this down first until we've got our coverage. And what we're going to do is put this base coat stabilizer here. So that's just basically clear base coat. You guys probably sometimes see me use this stuff. Uh, I call it blending clear. Basically, um, I can use it on the metallics, the light metallics, to help me do blends as well. I can also mix my pearl into it. So we've got this Metalux uh, Sunbeam Pearl is the name of the color there. And we're gonna be mixing that with this base coat stabilizer to uh, go over the top of that Sting Red. So basically, when it's in the shade, when this car's on the inside of, uh, of the workshop, you probably won't notice much of a color difference. However, as soon as it gets into the sun, you're gonna see that pearl just stand right out and it's just gonna look really nice. So um, that's a way of just us not having to paint the inside of the door jams, but giving it a really nice color. Sometimes people just think, oh, I'll just throw loads of pearl in it. It's gonna make it look better. It's not always the case. I've done a couple of test cards um, so I've found that not too much, I'll know how much I'm going to have to put into it. First up, I'm going to be putting this into my can here. Next up, I'm going to be adding this and this and uh, I'll take you guys through that uh, also. Um, so the following vids after this, I'm going to be giving you guys a look at, at the uh, paintwork on this same car too. So. So as I say, this is just a bit of an overview video for this car. I'll give you guys a look at sort of start to finish. Uh, how we go about making the colour and a end, end result as well. So, I forgot to get some footage of it before we actually started repairing it. So, this is sort of halfway through when we'd started doing a couple of the repairs as well. Now, uh, these big wheels on that car, they ended up scrubbing out a little bit around those uh, guards and the quarter panels. So we ended up having to do a few repairs there. We ended up rolling the guards out a bit, lipping them up and uh, pumping them out just a touch. And next up we're taking it straight in the booth, giving it a good mask up and we're going to give it a good four coats of high build primer over those filler areas. However, the bonnet itself just had a few stone chips in it. So we filled them in with a nice uh, lightweight fine polyester filler. Worth is the brand. And I've actually found it's probably one of the best uh, on the market. Some of the other guys I've worked with over the years like to use the U-Pole Dolphin Glaze. However, I find it's just a bit too runny, so for stone chips and stuff like that, it ends up dropping a little bit too far down into the chip, and you can end up having a little low spot, whereas with the Worth, uh, I find it doesn't do that. Um, as you see there, that was the primer that we're using, High Chem 2-Pack High Fill Primer. Um, look, it's okay. It's not the best primer I've used, it's far from the worst as well. Um, just by putting that first coat on, not too heavy, you're going to aid your shrink back. I always do that when I prime up now. Uh, I was never taught that way, but I just found over the years, just by putting that first coat on, just a medium wet coat, you'll definitely aid your shrink back, or edge mapping is what uh, other people call it. So basically, where you've cut through uh, with your sanding papers, uh, through your clear coat, through your base coat, into the primer, um, if you put that first coat on too heavy, you can end up seeing a bit of a edge around uh, those repairs. Sometimes, once after it's been painted, you might get it out in the sun a couple of days. It'll all still be curing by that stage, and then you might sometimes end up seeing a bit of that edge mapping. But uh, do it this way, you find a lot less chance of that happening. Now. I do highly recommend hanging around to the end because this car, when it's done, it looks insane. Uh, we've actually still got this car at our workshop. Um, my business partner, he's gone and taken the car down the shops and he had so many comments just by driving the car. He had this guy on a motorbike, motorbike dude, bikey, he's just like, mate, pulled up at the lights, he's like, that is insane color. Um, everybody that drives past it's parked out the front of our workshop. 
everyone that drives past there just like man that's mad they love it um and it's fun for me also to get to sort of step outside the box i guess uh most of the time and where i used to work you've just got to return the car to previous accident condition whereas stuff like this we get a bit of artistic license we've just said mate this is what we reckon is going to look the best on it we've gone and made our own color up and it's yeah it's just something you can really take a bit of pride in um, so as you see there, we've taken it out after leaving it overnight, given it all a good block down, all those primed areas, sanded the rest of it down with the DA orbital sander, given it a really good blow off, wiped it all down, and here it is in the booth. Uh, we've started doing the edge masking here. We've then thrown a piece of plastic over the entire car, cut it out with a razor blade and taped it all down again. Um, in this spray booth, I found it works better if we put a bit of water on the floor there. So that's that's what you see on the floor. Just helps aid uh, keep the dust down a little bit because it's not a full downdraft. It doesn't have um, obviously it's got no grates in the floor to continue that downdraft. So sometimes we get um, little vortexes or vortices in the uh, spray booth, which ends up uh, picking the dust up from the ground and it can end up landing on your job as well. So. Here we go, that's after the base coat stage. Um, I'll put uh, good three coats of the Sting Red down. Is F143 is the paint code for this car. This, I actually really like this color just by itself. If, if I was to put clear over that, it's still actually a nice, bright, clean red. And here you see me getting into that 599, which is what I was referring to earlier as the blending clear. In a lot of my other videos, I refer to it as blending clear. I'll let you guys know why. Main reason is because I used to use the Glazeret system and they refer to um, the exact same thing as this as blending clear. So I'm just going to tip a lot of that in there, tip a bit of reducer in just to get the last little bits that may be in the can and next up I'm going to be getting into my pearl. So um, I'm going to be using some Metalux pearl here and I know what you may be thinking, probably have these paint reps sitting there thinking you can't do that. But let me tell you now, you can and there's absolutely no problems in mixing Metalux with um, Standox. Um, to be honest, there is exactly the same ingredients in just about all the paints, as long as it's uh, solvent based. Um, obviously, I'm not going to go and put a water based pearl in there. Um, if it was a powder pearl, that would be different. The powder would float in that stabilizer and you would not have any adverse effects at all. Now, as I say, you don't want to overdo it with this pearl. If you go and put too much in, it will just um, sort of be too hard to lay down. It will start going mottly and it'll just stand out too much and go too orange. So um, we ended up naming this color here Sting Beam because it's Sting Red underneath and Sunbeam uh, Gold Pearl over the top, which is a Zeralic Pearl. And pretty nice color. So there's the car. Um, once I've put my coat of uh, pearl coat over the top, just gave it sort of one nice medium wet coat over the entire thing, nice and even. If I'm to be 100% critical on it, there is a few little patches where it's um, a little bit mottly, but um, to the untrained eye and even to my eye, I reckon it looks great. Um, I'd be happy with it on my car. And now I'm using the Chromax or DuPont 696S Clear. So I put that little piece in there just to show you guys that DuPont has just been renamed to Chromax. It's exactly the same thing, same same everything. They've just changed the name to Chromax recently. So there it is after a good couple of coats of clear. Um, I use the Devilbus GTI Pro Light T20 as you guys would probably have guessed because you guys probably know that I usually like to use that on my nice jobs for clear coat. And um, it turns out that I actually didn't even end up doing any polishing on this car at all. It was a budget respray for my partner's friend, so you know we didn't want to go and uh, spend too much time working on it. We've already spent a hell of a lot of time doing all the repairs and paintwork. It was quite clean, not too much in it, enough that we could live with it. We basically said, if you want the full detailing and polishing side done, you're basically going to have to give us more money. But he got the um, desired result out of it, you know. Um, it was really faded when it came in to start off with because um, a lot of you guys probably already know how the reds fade. There's uh, 
There is a scientific reason for that. I won't get involved in that in this episode because we'll just um, have a bit of a look at this car outside and then that'll be the end of this video. I might touch on that in the next video. So there you go. It's, it just looks totally different in the sun again, doesn't it? It's totally awesome. It's um, As I say, it's great to be able to step out of the box, do something custom and um, yeah, be a little bit creative as well. So if I'm to be... My biggest critic, which I always am, there's a little bit of model in that bonnet, a little bit down the sides, but nothing too major. It's just, uh, all in all, I'm very happy with the, the finished product there. That uh, Chromax 6, 696S Clear um, holds a real nice gloss. It's very durable. It's got a good anti-scratch resistance to it. and. Um, we like to use that on all the nice jobs that we do. So the car itself, um, for those of you who don't know, I've got a lot of American viewers and they're not 100% familiar with some of the Australian built cars. This is a Holden Commodore VU and it's a Ute. Uh, so in America, these things are probably sold as Pontiacs, GTOs, and probably only get them in the sedan model, whereas over here they're sold in Utes and wagons as well. Uh, so the engine that's in this one is the LS1, so a lot of my American viewers will also be quite familiar with that, which is a Corvette engine, and it's a 350 Chev, so get a lot of grunt out of that. I thought I'd uh, include a little bit of the exhaust sound in it for you guys too. Pop the bonnet and give you guys a quick look at it. Um, pretty out there colour though, and yeah, I do recommend you guys have a look at the other two videos I've got at the very end here. I've got one where I just had a bit of fun, I cloned myself with my video editor. There's also a look at this uh, gun cleaning machine which I made up on the right there. So, thanks for watching, and this has been another Gunman production. Goodbye.